Hello, my name is Brajesh Jha and I'm responsible for Genpak's media, publishing and entertainment vertical. And my own remit is to look after industries that are involved in the media, content creation, distribution, monetization, and all of the companies that are in the adjacency, such as you know, marketing and data analytics firms. If you look at this entire industry segment, it's roughly at about 2.5 trillion right now, and the CAGR is about 4.5% 4 4 right now. So we are anticipating by 2026, 2027, this can easily cross 3 trillion in size. So um, having said that, let's look at uh, what, what I anticipate for the year ahead. We saw a tremendous amount of uh, media mergers and carve-outs and acquisitions that uh, dominated the headlines last year. I think that that is going to continue in 2023. Um, some of the ones that we saw, such as uh, AT&T spinning off uh, the Warner Brother assets and then Warner Brother Discovery becoming a new entity, we saw DirecTV being uh, carved out and sold to a PE firm. Uh, we saw Microsoft going after Activision Blizzard. Um, so these kind of consolidations are likely to happen and they are increasingly going to be focused around the, the gaming capabilities, which are fast becoming a big revenue generation stream for most of these companies. So uh, we anticipate operational efficiency will be a target area. So I think that, that this uh, rapid consolidation and, and reformation of the industry is likely to continue in 23. The second uh, big area, as I see it, is going to be this um, customer um, or consumer subscription fatigue. We saw everyone is now struggling with as many offerings as you can imagine uh, in terms of the subscriptions that they have to pay for for their favorite show on the video side or for uh, audio content or for music libraries uh, or for storage purposes. So all kinds of uh, subscription responsibilities that the households have, they have continued to increase. And now what is happening is churn has become a major issue. So for the first time in 2022, we saw about 30 million subscriptions got canceled. And this problem is going to become much, much more significant. And the best example is if you look at what happened to Netflix. I mean, they could raise prices in 2019 and 2020 and continue to add subscribers, but then they lost 200,000 subscribers in Q1 of last year. And then another 970,000 by Q2. So by the time the year ended, they had announced multiple tiers. Some of those were going to be based on ads and, and, and the quality of video feed and the number of people that could share and so on. This trend is going to continue. We have seen Disney Plus is going to announce something similar. So <clears throat> the bundling of different types of services such as video streaming, music, ebooks, cloud storage, things that Amazon and Apple have been trying, that is going to take up a lot of the effort from these companies so that they can minimize the amount of churn and increase the stickiness of their consumers. So that's, that's the second prediction. Let's look at the third one that I have in mind. And I talked about how these bundlings are happening. I think the ad-supported television, particularly with the success of Pluto or Fubo and, and and a whole bunch of uh, these free apps through which you can consume content uh, without having to pay for it. That rise in free ad supported television is going to dominate uh, the focus of a lot of the media companies. And uh, if you look at uh, uh, PwC comes out with these uh, predictions for the next five years and we saw one of their um, interesting inflection points that happened in 2022 is if you look at consumer spending, internet access, and advertising, for the first time in 2022, advertising went ahead of internet access in terms of revenue source. Um, the other thing that uh, everyone noticed is how fast the growth of TikTok has happened from a social media perspective, and people are able to search 
and go straight to the landing page of the product which is being shown in a, a video that someone might have created. So this uh, uh, advertising and associated revenue generation is going to be on top of mind for both the traditional media companies as well as the tech firms and uh, the social media firms. The, the next prediction I have is in terms of the live sports market. That is becoming a battleground between your streaming platforms, cable companies, satellite service providers, the tech giants, hyperscalers, all of them are trying to negotiate uh, the deals with the, the sports leagues and franchises who are looking to secure the best possible price. And if you look at it, the, the streaming companies and uh, all of the uh, uh, all of the channels through which consumer stickiness is almost guaranteed, they are trying to look at live sports as a way to beef up all of the rest of their offerings from fresh content that they have, or in some cases, social media and so on. And then on the other hand, you've got these sports, uh, sports organizations. They are looking to see how much more they can monetize and get the best deal for their respective leagues. So this uh, we saw the big announcements that happened last year where um, um, the Amazon and NFL deal was announced. Uh, Apple and MLS uh, deal was announced. We saw uh, um, uh, Viacom uh, signing up the IPL cricket deal last year. So these are things that are bound to happen and will continue to happen in 2023. And finally, the fifth one is more from a distribution and consumption perspective. That is, your cable companies are going to focus and all of the big internet service providers, they are going to focus a lot more on 5G standalone networks. These, up until last year, most of the time you saw 4G infrastructure uh, just enhanced for 5G capabilities. But now the investment in standalone networks is really gaining momentum. And it is going to be targeted not so much on the consumer segment, but more on the enterprise segment. And the enterprise customers are going to expect the real benefits of what the promise of 5G uh, was in terms of you know, fiber-like speeds, reliability, and all kinds of transactions that can happen with that kind of speed. So th these uh, big internet service providers, MVNOs, they are going to invest very, very, very heavily in unified virtual networks and management systems and so on.